Remember back in episode one when we talked about how when the model minority myth was created, it used Chinatowns as the blueprints for ideal, successful, and wealthy minority communities? Well, today, some of those very Chinatowns lack ample health care, staff, and clinics. Dr. Lin helped explain this with an example. In Chicago, um, I learned this as I was looking for jobs after residency, that right now there's almost no uh, pediatricians and, and, and barely any doctors at all in the Chinatown neighborhood. Um, and so there are a lot of Chinese people now going to Pilsen, which is like a nearby um, neighborhood that's predominantly Latino, but now like, getting gentrified. Uh, so they're kind of having to like go across the river um, to outside of their neighborhood to, to seek um, care. And you see that paralleled in like rural areas as well. So places that are uh, less financially well off, less politically powerful, um, clinics and hospitals um, have less incentive to be in those areas um, because uh, if they're taking more Medicaid patients, they're going to be losing money compared to if they are uh, having patients with private insurance. And so we've seen that a lot of these clinics and hospitals in underserved neighborhoods are closing down. Hospitals are continuing to close down on Chicago's um, far south side and in rural Illinois. Uh, And if we just got rid of this disparity between public and private um, insurance and um, reimbursement, then we wouldn't see those subsequent disparities in access to care. So I think, well, part of the uh, disadvantage that Asian Americans can face is, like I said, the language barrier. So right now our system is extremely confusing. Even people who are native English speakers often, you know, can't understand their insurance claims or can't understand how to, like, make an appointment, uh, can't read their bills, um, you know, don't know like what documents they need to, to sign up for insurance or to, 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 um, to see a doctor. And so all of that, any step of that can be a barrier. Um, and then needing to be in a position of privilege essentially to have insurance in this country is another issue. So if you are you know, a cook at a restaurant or you're, you know, you're part-time, like, like how my dad used to have temp jobs where, you know, he was driving or cleaning, then you're not going to have health insurance um, through those kinds of jobs. So our system makes it so that your insurance is tied to employment and to specifically good full-time employment that includes benefits. And so there are so many millions of people who are being left out right now. And especially during a pandemic, we know that the essential workers and, and minorities are, are, are the ones getting sick at high rates and then they're passing on the virus to everybody else. And so um, having a system where we don't have universal health care uh, in such a rich, wealthy country is, I think, shameful at this point. 